Do you want to start automating your applications and you don't want to deal with all that nonsense where they limit you with the amount of applications, the amount of tasks and the amount of workflows? Well, I have the solution for you. It's called Bitflows. Let me show you how it works right now. Hey, what's up everyone? So this is Bitflows and it's a WordPress plugin that you can install right now. The beauty about this is that it doesn't have to stick to WordPress applications. You can actually connect to any application that's out there, either to a direct connection that Bitflows provides via API or webhook. So it doesn't have to stick to WordPress. But the beauty about this is that since it's a application or a plugin for WordPress, it will connect to other plugins inside of WordPress. So if you need to connect, for example, your forms from Divi, Elementor, Beaver Builder, etc., you can grab that information and send it over to a third party system, which are things that are not normally available in other applications that automate out there, right? It's a big advantage that Bitflows has. And the other big advantage that it has is that it's not going to limit you on the amount of workflows that you create, the amount of connections, and how many things you want to connect in that workflow because it's inside of your WordPress site once you install the plugin. And you can also grab the free version that they have available and start using it right away. Obviously with a few limitations, but there's a free version. And if you like it, go ahead and jump into the pro version. Now, in this case, I'm going to show you how easy it is to connect something from WordPress into a third party application like Brevo. So I'm going to grab from contact form seven, which is a plugin from WordPress. I'm going to grab those details when someone signs up with my form and I'm going to send those details to my email marketing service, which is Brevo, all done automatically with Bitflows. All right. So the first thing I need to do is obviously set this up. So let's go ahead and jump into create flows. So in this case, I'm going to select a blank template. So let's go ahead and create. Here we go. And we're going to get started with the first application. Now, before I do that, let me show you really quickly the applications that are available as of this video. So they are adding more as they go along. But if you can't find the application, the good thing about this is that you can use API or webhook. Now, things that I really love about this is that you have the option to connect with plugins that are out there from WordPress. For example, Cocktail Form 7, DB Builder, DB Form Builder. You got, for example, Elementor Form, Event 10. These are plugins that you can find inside of WordPress and you'll be able to connect them with other applications. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and select the first app. And in this case, I'm going to use a plugin that I've just installed, which is Contact Form 7, because I want to send over the data when someone fills out the form to a third party service. Now, normally you would have to, for example, pay for an additional service for contact form seven to get access to send that data elsewhere. But in this case, we're going to use a workaround per se. So in this case, I'm going to select the form that's built on contact form seven, which is this one right here. And the first thing I need to do is listen to a response. That means that it needs to grab the first details in order for me to send that data over in this case to Brebo. All right. So let me go ahead and open up my site again. Okay, here we go. We're on our WordPress site. Let's go into our contact form. Here it is. And we're going to find all the contacts form available here. In this case, there's only one, but I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab this short code because I'm going to add it to my page right now. Okay. So during this video, let's just say that we've just created this form. We are going to run a test for this and I'm going to edit with Elementor and I'm going to add the form into a page that I've built. So this is a really great use case where you have a form that is not complex. You don't have to go into complex settings and you set it up and you send that data over to your email marketing service. Okay. So let's search for an Elementor short code. Let's go ahead and add it right here. Let's add our code right there. And here we go. We now have our form. Let's go ahead and publish this. All right. Let's go ahead and view it. And over here on our Bitflows uh, application, we are going to listen for a response. So it's waiting for us to fill out the form once. So it grabs the details. Okay. So let's fill out this once and I'm going to say Jorge and message test. Okay, let's go ahead and submit this. Let's go into Bitflows and there we go. We just grabbed the details. So now let's go ahead and close this. We're good to go here. And next is what do we want to do next with the automation? It now knows that every single time that someone fills out that form, it's going to receive the data here. Now, what do we want to do with it? It's up to us. Okay, so there's a bunch of things that we can do for the connections available here. You got apps and you got tools. So for example, if I wanted to grab those details and later send out an email, well, I can actually delay this a bit so it's not automatic. And then I can send over the email details and then start the email flow there. Okay. So let's get started with the connection. In this case, select the app and I'm going to use a Brebo for this. Here we go. And I'm going to create a contact. Okay. So the details that I'm going to grab 
it's going to create a contact in my email marketing service. So what do I need to do? I need to connect to Breville. So I need to grab the credentials of Breville. So I'm going to click on this link right here. And in my case, I'm already logged into Brevo, but if not, go ahead and log in first. Okay. And I'm going to create a brand new API key and I'm just going to name this bit flows. going to go ahead and generate it. And here we go. We got our key. Let's go back into bit flows. Let's go ahead and connect right here. And once we do that, we'll be able to view the list that we've created over there on Brevo. So in this case, I'm going to use the test list. If you haven't created a list, go ahead and create one in the list section. Okay. Over here in context, you'll find list and you're going to go ahead and create it there. Uh, if you connect it later on, just go ahead and connect again. All right, here we go. Now we need to map the fields. So in this case, email with email, phone with phone, subject with subject, etc. The things you want to connect, go ahead and do so here. So in this case, email is going to be tied with the form data with, that we've just received. In this case, it's going to be the email. Next contact field is going to be the first name and I'm going to tie it to the name over here. So we got our name and if I have more fields here that I want to connect, I go ahead and do so right now. In this case, I am good to go. So now we are going to send over the email and the first name just for testing purposes. I would recommend that you have the form fields with the details that you want to send over to Brevo in this case. Okay, so we're here. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and test this out. So let's test out the flow once. Listen to new response. Here we go. And again, we're going to fill out the form. All right. So let's go to refresh this. Now, the only details that I'm sending over is the name and the email. All right. And just for testing purposes, let's go into Breville contacts list. Here we go. Let's go to test. Here we go. There's nothing going on here. So I am going to send over this form. OK, let's go ahead and submit this. OK, here we go. That should be sent off, even though it says it's working and we should be seeing the contact over here. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And here it is. We now have the email automatically. What does this mean for you? I've just automated this in the video. So you understand how easy it is to automate. That means that every single time that someone fills out this form, if they want to subscribe, if they want to send over their contact details or whatever, a support ticket, you're going to send over the details and we're going to have that contact added into our list for our email marketing service. So in this case, we are not able to automate and do more things in Brevo or just continue more automations in Bitflow. So that's like a super basic connection. Now, what if I want to further automate this and make it more complex? Well, let's just say that I want to use AI for this because I want to send more details to Brevo once it has more details received. OK, so let's just say that on the contact form in the subject, what if there's a message saying, uh, give me your complaint? All right. And we're going to use AI to read that and give us a summary or make it make it like tag it in a way that we understand what it's for. If it's a complaint, if it's a compliment, if it's a whatever, we're able to do that with OpenAI in this case. So, for example, here in, in BitFlows, I'm going to unlink this and I am going to add here the application. So here we go. Let's go ahead and move this and we're going to connect it to here we go. And in this application, it's going to be OpenAI. Here we go. Let's go ahead and select this and I want to create a chat completion. So let's go ahead and select this. I will connect OpenAI with API, so I will need my API connection. Give me a second to grab that. OK, here we go. We are now connected and I'm going to use for GPT 4.1 nanos since it's going to be a simple task. Masks token. I'm going to select 10 the message. Here we go. The field is going to be user and the value is going to be the details that we need. So in this case, I want to use this as a tagging system for Brevo, right? So I'm going to say that if the it's going to act as a sentiment analysis and if the message is positive, tag it with positive and if it's bad, tag it with negative. So let me go ahead and write that. OK, so I just wrote this simple prompt here that if it's positive, tag it as positive, if it's negative, tag it as negative. Yeah, obviously, you do have to do something way more specific and more complex. OK, so the message is going to be grabbed from the form data in this case from the message. All right. And we can also bring in here the subject. So it's going to analyze both of these to tag it. All right, here we go. So here's the value. I'm going to close this. We're good to go. OK, here we go. Let me go ahead and test this once. OK, here we go. It's now listening. Let's go ahead and fill this out once. And I'm going to say I hate this. Uh, really bad service. And that's going to be the test message. Go ahead and submit this. And Bitflow should receive that data. Here we go. 
Now let's go back into Breville. We should now have details to add as a sentiment. So let's go ahead and add a field here. Let's go ahead and select sentiment. Okay, so now let's go into values. Let's go into OpenAI and we should see it here in choices, message. And here it is, the content, negative, all right? So now it's gonna use sentiment analysis for the message that we received, okay? So let's go ahead and close this and we're good to go. So now what's going to happen is that when someone fills out the, this contact form for whatever reason, maybe it's a support ticket system, maybe just opt in form or just uh, find out about details about your application, etc. Whatever you want to use that form, it's going to grab those details. OpenAI is going to read the title and message in this case. It is going to do in sentiment analysis to find out if it's a positive or negative message. And it's going to send over the details to Brevo along with the contact details. And it's going to let you know if it's positive or negative because maybe you want to do something with it afterwards. Maybe tag it or maybe take more care of that message if it's negative, etc. And all with this automation. Now, this is just like scratching the surface of what Bitflows can do. You can do a whole lot more with this. Uh, take, for example, inside of one of these automations, you got several details that you can automate inside of here, including the value fields, because you can do more things with the fields that you receive. If you want to do some math with the fields, that is possible too. So you got your applications where you can connect with applications. You got flows. You can connect with the flow ID, the name and the flow status. If you want to do more with that math with it. So if you want to use that in combination, that's also possible. A string and system, all that available. So if you need to know about system, if you want to send over those details too. So if someone is filling out the form and you need to know the system details, maybe that is possible too using this and it's up to you how you want to use that. So there's several details available there. So you got your applications, you got your tools, you got your connections that you've connected to. So you got a list of all of the applications that you connected to uh, here, just a really easy form to list them. You got your webhook details available here. You got your custom applications that you can start creating right here. So you don't have to specifically stick with what you have available as of now. You can connect a custom app from here and do the connection and your available settings available there. So Bitflows is not going to limit you in how you automate and the amount of automations that you're going to create. So definitely give Bitflows a chance. Go ahead and start off with the free plugin that you can install right now on WordPress and jump over to the pro version if you like what you're getting. So definitely check it out. Link provided in the description. And that is a wrap with Bitflows.